Berkeley City State University. This is Professor Angela Mirso here live in the podcast studio today. Welcome friends of the university, students, faculty, staff, alumni, athletic department. We welcome you to our next artist talk. And it's a special one. We have Bailey Nelson, a double major in digital design and art. And she's also a marketing minor and she's on the volleyball team. She is amazing here at Valley City State University and we will get ready to talk about, hear from her about her exhibition, Everlasting. So, Bailey. Thank you, Angela. Um, hey everyone, like Angela said, my name is Bailey Nelson and welcome to my artist talk about my senior capstone exhibit called Everlasting. So first, I'm going to start by sharing a little bit about myself. I am from Argusville, North Dakota, which is just north of Fargo, and I lived there my whole life before I came here for college. I graduated from high school from Northern Cass, where I played two sports, and as you can see from the photo of me coloring when I was little, I've always considered myself a creative and artistic person, and art in any form has always been a hobby of mine. My artistic interest started with hand lettering, and one snow day as a freshman in high school, I started writing and decorating in a sketchbook, and now people ask me to make signs for their weddings or graduations or any event you can really think of. And at VCSU, I am majoring in art and digital design, and I also have a minor in marketing. I chose to come to VCSU to play volleyball, not fully knowing what I wanted to major in. And I actually told my tour guide when I was first touring VCSU that I didn't need to see the art department because I thought I would never end up here. And when I said that, my dad looked at me like I was crazy because it turns out I was because it's exactly where I am. Um, and I've had quite the journey in the art department though. Um, I was first a just an art major. And then when we got to digital design, I declared that major. And then now I'm completing both majors so I can stay another semester to play my last year of volleyball. And volleyball is a huge part of my life. My family has always been involved in sports and I met my best friends because of volleyball. And that top right photo is of me and my sister on the court together this past season. And I love that photo because I feel like it captures family, friends, and volleyball all in one. So volleyball is what brought me to VCSU, and now VCSU has helped me see through my passion for design. So now I'll show some of my previous works that showcase my designs using typography and my overall exploration in art. Typography is one of my favorite parts of design, which is kind of a combination of hand lettering and digital design in a way. So like I said before, I was just an art major when I started at VCSU before I switched over to focus on digital design. So here are a few works from that time when I was just exploring different mediums in the beginning. And printmaking and photography were what I enjoyed the most. The purple print and the coffee print are two printmaking works I did my freshman year. And I was drawn to printmaking because I got to design something and then produce prints which is essentially what I'm doing right now with my digital work. And with photography, it was my first experience with digital design platforms since we got to edit photos in Photoshop, like this one of me on the swing. And I included the 3D piece of the mugs that I made, because, and I chose to explore 3D design in these past couple semesters to help advance my work as a digital artist. In digital design, we often have to make 3D objects when the screen is technically two-dimensional. So learning how to make 3D art physically has helped me create those same forms digitally. And I also just love this mug project that I did. Um, the theme of coffee comes up a lot in my work because I love coffee. And you can't really tell in the photo, but these mugs are actually very large. I think that's another reason why I love it because it's kind of amusing to see an everyday item that you can hold in your hand be significantly scaled up. And I think they're close to like three feet tall when they're all stacked up like that. And so all of these pieces helped me build a foundation with the art department and it's kind of where I started. And this work is a mobile app prototype that I created in 2021 for Healthier You Nutrition. 
And this QR code here will take you to the app. And even though it is fully designed, it is not fully functioning since it's just a prototype. And so a lot of the buttons work so you can navigate through the app, but not all of them. So if you're scanning here, just be aware of that. And doing this project taught me a lot about the way that people interact with typography. And I learned how I should design text in order for people to be able to understand its function whether it's meant to be a button that you press or if it's meant to be only read or how people will navigate through the app without any confusion. And this is a work from my internship that I had with the Times Record, which is the local newspaper here. And it's one of those, or it's one of the layouts that I created last year. And I wanted to include this as it's a published work. And I think it shows a real world example of design. And through creating this work I and many other similar ones, I discovered that newspaper is pretty limiting um, for creativity, even though it is still design. Um, the main purpose is obviously to make sure that people can read everything smoothly. And, you know, there are certain things that need to be consistent throughout a newspaper, like the fonts and the style and the size. And certain advertisements have to be a certain size. But in saying that, I gained a lot of design problem-solving skills during this internship. And I had to get all of the contents to fit within a certain amount of pages. So I was constantly making pictures smaller or jumping text to separate pages. But I still had to maintain all of that correct formatting. So this type of work was a true real world design experience. And it is why I wanted to include that in here. And next I will talk about some of my artistic and design influences that kind of inspired the work that I created for my show. Um, one of my biggest historical influences for my work is the Bauhaus movement, which is one of the largest graphic design movements taking place from 1919 to 1933. And I first learned about Bauhaus in a history of graphic design class, which was my first graphic design course I ever took. And I think that might be the reason why I like it so much is because at the time I was so eager to learn about graphic design as a subject that I just kind of clung to it. Um, the Bauhaus movement was when text started to be used to add geometric, abstract, or angular ornamentation to posters. And text became a design element in addition to its traditional function, which is communicating language. And so like you can see in this example that I have here, text is being wrapped around shapes and rotated at certain angles in order to create a visibly more appealing poster. And this has been an influence to me because my design brain works with the text first. So when I'm designing something, I'll figure out how to arrange the text, how I'll make it work in it as a design element, and how I can manipulate letters to communicate what I want to. And then every other aspect after that just kind of falls into place. So a more modern influence for my work is a hand lettering artist named Jessica Hish. She creates stationery with her handwriting, as pictured here, and she also designs her own fonts. And my favorite thing about what she does is that she creates fonts for company branding. So those custom fonts that she creates are only associated with the one company she created them for. And I'm really drawn to her work because she does um, work that I am very interested in doing myself. I have always wanted to make stationary cards like thank yous or birthday cards with my handwriting or even with the fonts that I make myself. So now moving into the artwork that's in my show, which is titled Everlasting. I chose this name for a couple of reasons. My show is about hand lettering and typography, which is something we see across design in many forms. And technology moves forward and is constantly changing, but handwriting and typography have always been a part of design since the moment that it was created. And within design, text and writing is everlasting because it has stood the test of time. And on a personal level, handwriting is why I got interested in design and it continues to be a focal point in my work. So as a designer, my relationship with type has also been everlasting. For my show, I decided to do something that I've always wanted to do and create a typeface out of my own handwriting. And I titled the typeface Everlast. And to clarify, a typeface is a set of characters of the same design that can be varied by size, weight, and other aesthetic elements, which is not to be confused with fonts, which are stylistic variations of typefaces. So Times New Roman and Helvetica are typefaces, while Helvetica Light and Helvetica Bold are fonts. And I made a typeface with two different font variations, a print and a script. 
And pictured on this slide are typeface specimen posters that I made to showcase my typeface and the elements within it. And the one on the left is showing Everlast print as a whole as we see all the characters and basic information like the year it was made. And the one on the right highlights a letter from Everlast script so I could highlight some specific elements from the design. And in this one, I pointed out that the downstrokes are thicker and that the edges are rounded. And both of those things are characteristics I included to maintain the fact that the font was handwritten. And I wanted to include some process shots from creating my typeface, especially because I feel like this is a process that we don't see a lot of people doing and we don't typically know much about it. So because of that, I wanted to include more elements of the process within my show. I made a video that follows everything that I'm about to explain, and I also made certain design decisions based on the process. And those kinds of things are hidden and are maybe less noticeable, but I think it helps the final designs kind of tie in with the way that they were created. Here is a screenshot of the file where I wrote out every character individually. And I use the guides, which are the thin blue lines that are towards the top of the photo, to keep the height consistent throughout. And I also varied the weight or the thickness of different parts of each letter to give it that handwritten feel. And at this stage, I had to go in and save each character as its own file. And then after I did that, I used a font creation software titled FontForge, where I imported each character individually. And the larger photo is showing all the characters imported. And then if you double click on one of those, it shows the smaller picture that's off to the side. And this is where I was able to adjust the spacing around each letter. So when it was being typed, the letters would have consistent spacing. And they would also um, make all the letters sit on that bottom line. So once you type it, it would type straight across on the same plane. And then here is the first time that I was testing my typeface after I got it downloaded and saved as a font. I just typed out the alphabet, I typed out random words, my name, my birthday, and it was actually shocking to see that it actually worked because the rest of the process was so time consuming and I had never done it before, so I wasn't actually convinced that it would type, but just like any other typeface, and I was pleasantly surprised. There were little things that I still needed to fix. Um, if you look at the script typeface, you can see that some letters are spaced really far apart or at uneven heights. So I had to go back in the process and fix a few of those as I wanted the letters to overlap. So it was like they were connecting like a cursive handwriting. Another work in my exhibit is titled Stationary Collection, which is a collection of cards. And it includes a birthday card, a graduation card, and two postcards. And I installed them on this 24 by 18 inch cork board. And I also have a separate pedestal in the gallery with multiples of each card. And I did that because I wanted to show the production aspects of digital design. And a huge part of digital design is the production aspects. So I wanted to show that with the work, how it can be multiplied and we can repeat the process of printing them. And each of the cards utilize my typeface in some way. So this was the first time that I was utilizing my typeface in designs. So it was fun to get to experiment with manipulating it and implementing it with the real world design. And there's also stickers that I incorporated into this collection with simple designs inspired by other elements of my show. Another piece in my show is called Identity. And I made this in 2021 in a photography class actually. I added my handwriting in the background of a self-portrait. Um, this piece is about how your identity is not only about the way you see yourself, but also how other people perceive you. So the words that I wrote in the background are all words that other people use to describe me. And it also includes underlying pieces of myself, like how my favorite color is pink and my interest in hand lettering. Oh. Okay, similar to my last piece, this one called In the Media is also about identity, but from a different perspective. It's designed kind of as if it was a magazine cover, so I chose to romanticize very basic aspects of my life to act as if they were blown up by the media. So I turned things like my college decision and my hobbies into something that would be magazine stories, which was actually really fun. 
Um, this piece was about arranging text as I framed the subject with text and I also hand wrote my name across the middle. And this is a piece called Coffee House, which is a 34 by 24 inch piece that I made last year. It's inspired by uh, the coffee house that is in the TV show The Flash called CC Jitters. And this is an isometric illustration, which isometric means that perspective of the illustration is representing three dimensional objects in a two dimensional or flat plane. And this type of perspective is often used in engineering and technical drawings. So at the same time I was making this, I was actually in a science class and we were doing isometric drawings like this one to kind of relate it to engineering. So it was interesting for me to be able to relate this piece to the scientific or architectural part of design. And of course, I had to experiment with putting letters into isometric perspective. And I wanted to take the opportunity to learn more about letters in their three-dimensional form because I always feel like the more I know about letters and their forms, the more I'm able to do with them in my designs. And this is a work titled This Way Tea, and it is a product package design work that I made last year. And there are three different levels of packaging, and each of them have slightly different designs. And typography was a very important element in this work, as there are multiple pieces of information that needed to be included, like the title of the product, the flavors, the company name, and other nutritional facts. So all of that had to be incorporated somewhere in the packaging. And so I focused on using typography in a functional way because I wanted the package to be easy to read and to inform people about the product. And this was also about hierarchy of text, which I had to make the most important text maybe bigger or bolder, whereas the less important text is much smaller or even placed on the side of the box that isn't always seen at first glance if we're on a shelf or a display. And I'll wrap up with some of my future plans. Um, as I already mentioned at the beginning of my talk, I am staying one more semester to take my COVID season of volleyball, and I will be finishing up the rest of my classes, and I also plan to take this extra semester to build a strong portfolio for myself, and I don't have any strict plans for myself after that. I know I want to get a job in graphic design, and I could see myself staying around here, but I would also like to live somewhere else for a while <laughs> since I've lived in North Dakota my whole life, but... We will see, because um, I'm open to a lot at this point, and as right now, my main focus is finishing up my last semester of my upcoming season of volleyball. And lastly, I just want to thank everyone who's watching and let everyone know about that following this talk, about the reception for Everlasting in the gallery, and with more work and the ones that I have talked about. Thank you, Bailey. Amazing works and also, folks, if you're tuning in, there is a QR code, which if you want to ask Bailey a question as we are here in the studio, feel free to scan the QR code with your cell phone and type in a question for Bailey Nelson. And I have my first one. What has been your biggest, or since you're both an art major and a digital design major, what was the class that really took it off of that? this is it for you. Yeah, I think, I mean, the moment I walked in, I was an art major. Mm -hmm. And I know we talked about the first time that I met with you about there becoming a digital design mm -hmm. major, because I came here wanting that, but I wanted to play volleyball and yeah. I put that first. But then when you, once you told me about the digital design major, I was like, I know for sure that I made the right decision and that I'm in the right place. So I think my first class was the history of graphic design, but my mm -hmm. first actual like applying graphic design was the introduction to digital media, mm -hmm. which I feel like I really flourished in that class because I had some design background in the photography classes. So I was able to really focus on design. And that was when I got introduced to all of the Adobe platforms where I got to design on my own. And so I really think that's kind of what set it up and made me like I was finally, after being here for a year without the major, I felt like I was finally like in the right mm -hmm. place and doing what I was meant to do. Awesome, because I remember you were in painting, drawing, the 2D design. You yep. still did traditional handwriting. Yes. <laughs> and you're, if that's the one thing, I was surprised you didn't put the one painting in there that you did do hand lettering way back in painting one. Yes. It was so, it was so hard to choose everything because, like you said, I try to include hand lettering in mm -hmm. almost every single thing that I do every project I get I'm like hmm how can I put letters into this 
in the to this typography here. yes and what advice do you have for students who are currently in the program whether it's in digital design or in art or are you gonna take both <laughs> yeah I think well especially being in both I think it's important to know like I talked about how much they relate to each other because mm -hmm. even understanding visual art makes me a better digital artist at the end of the day and I think my advice would be that, you know, if you find yourself landing in the art department, that can be a very, it can be very intimidating because it's a very vague statement, you know, just being an art major. So, but there's so many things that you can do with it. And I think we have the department and we have the professors to help you decide like what area you want to go mm -hmm. into. So even though, even though art can be a very vague subject, there's a lot of places you can land and we have the people to yep. help you find your way. Is there any medium you're hoping to try since I know this next semester you have one more semester. Is there something you want to dabble in? I think I want to take the extra semester. Like I talked about building my portfolio, but I think also taking the time to kind of focus on the production parts a little bit more because mm -hmm. every time I, I'm very intimidated by that big printer that we have right now, <laughs> it's just I don't really know how to work it properly. And I think that, you know, learning how to do the printing or learning how to maybe cut stuff out or like I said kind of like multiplying my work and I experimented that in my show but that's kind of something that I want to continue to work on because like I said in my talk it's a very it's a very big part of digital design is learning how to do the production parts of it yes which is very important especially that size of print to that 3d model to yes and which do you enjoy more, making new design elements individually from scratch or arranging existing elements into an overall design? That is a tough question. <laughs> I feel like I like both mm -hmm. for maybe different reasons. I think creating something on my own, you know, I feel like I can take more pride in that, you know, that I created something like completely from scratch and it's all mine. Because I think that's something I experienced when I did my typeface. The reason mm -hmm. why I wanted to develop it is because I never, I never thought that I could find a handwritten typeface that really, that I really wanted mm -hmm. or that the style I wanted. And maybe it's because I know that I have the ability to write it myself. Mm -hmm. So especially with typography, I think a lot of the times I like to make that stuff from scratch because I think I have like developed such an eye for it. I know how I want the text to look. I know if, that I could just do things by hand instead. But I think other things, I like to, you know, have those design elements and kind of work with them because that's one of the reasons why I like digital mm -hmm. design. You know, you can have very straight lines, very geometric shapes. You have an undo button. <laughs> so that's yeah. kind of why I like digital design because, you know, you aren't limited, but you can keep those clean lines yeah. in the very straight shapes. And like with painting and drawing where you have to erase or you have to paint over. <laughs> yes. Because I can remember from those classes especially. Yeah. Um, would you develop another typeface? I definitely think that I would. Mm. Um, I have a lot of I have a lot of areas in my handwriting that I could go with this. And I also am interested in making, you know, more variations of the typeface that I already created. You know, like there's bolder and there's italics and so I'm very interested in kind of expanding on the one that I have right now. So, yeah, I'm definitely interested in that. Ooh. We'll be seeing soon in Microsoft Office a Bailey Nelson font. <laughs> yeah. Um, what would you consider your biggest motivator for your art and what drives your vision? Um, I don't know. I feel like I've kind of grown up with the vision of mm -hmm. handwriting. I... I, I didn't know if I was going to mention this, but I actually won a handwriting contest in elementary school. And that's kind of like, I didn't really know I could write. Mm -hmm. Like, I didn't know I had neat handwriting until after that. So I think I've always, growing up, knew that I liked handwriting and that I liked to work with that. So I think it was just kind of something that I've always aspired to do. Or even, like, I would hear people complaining about, like, addressing envelopes or addressing people's invitations. And I'm like, I will do it for you. I'm like, I will do the handwriting. And so it's something that I've always been interested mm -hmm. in. And ever since I was growing up, it was always, always an interest. Awesome. Which just gives to the best question next. Can people reach out to you about buying your work or having you create a typography print for them? I mean, absolutely. I mean, I haven't thought a whole lot about that, but yeah, I definitely, I mean, I definitely have, you know, I don't know what my prices are. I don't know anything about that, but I would definitely be interested in making stuff for people or if people want to reach out and have me make something or a typeface for them. Yeah. 
You're awesome. And here's one dealing back with you being a volleyball player. What advice do you have for high schoolers considering being a student athlete? Um, I think the main thing is that you have to have a undeniable love for the game that you want to play. I think it's there's a lot of hardships that come with being a student athlete, especially in college. There's a lot of time management and a lot of stuff goes into that. So, And if you love the game you're playing, then it makes everything else worth it. The early mornings, the maybe the late nights, the traveling, the missing classes. It can be a lot, but it's definitely worth it if you're enjoying the game that you're playing and if you love your teammates and if you love the game. And especially going after a double major and a minor, and especially into the art and digital design, which is not a very, I wouldn't say easy, major degree path. Yes. Because <laughs> how many nights were you late in between McCarthy and the Center for the Arts? <laughs> yes, so many. And that's especially what's hard about art is that it's so, it's so hands-on and it's mm -hmm. so... It's kind of, you know, you have to be in that studio space sometimes. So when I was traveling, it was hard to kind of plan around that in order to be in the studio to get my assignments done. It's because even when we get study time, when we're traveling, I'm like, I need to be in the studio. I need supplies. So, yeah, it's definitely a different thing to tackle, but it's been fun. It's been. And you've overcome the challenges and had good seasons with the volleyball team, too. And yeah. Your artwork's been fabulous. <laughs> Thank you. As you've grown from 2019 to now it's yes. like amazing mm -hmm. and now you get to walk across the stage in spring i do hopefully 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 with, um what would be your dream company group or cause to get to 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 design for like your dream company to design for hmm. company that's a tough one <laughs> i think i've always had especially i keep talking about handwriting or i keep going back to handwriting mm -hmm. But one of what, something on my bucket list is to have my handwriting be on like some sort of packaging, whether mm. it's like something simple as like some like food packet or something that people are going to throw away or something <laughs> that's like maybe like a coffee cup. And I'm coming back to coffee, too, I guess, because I love coffee. Yes. But I've always thought about, you know, ha maybe having my handwriting on like a coffee cup or something like that. I think that'd be really cool. So what kind of coffee would you love to design for coffee company? I mean, <laughs> literally anyone. Anybody? Yeah. But, I mean, you have the big ones, like Starbucks, Caribou, but I would be fine with doing small business ones, too. Small business. Yeah. Those are just as important, so. And I'm going to ask about color, because I know with typography, there's not as much with color, but right. what kind of color would you, would you put with your font, Everlasting? Um, that was another thing that I, I didn't show it, but when I was testing out my font, I tried to test it out in certain colors, mm -hmm. and I definitely think that darker colors are better suited for this typeface because some of the lines do get really thin, and as of right now, there's not other variations or bolder variations right now, so darker things would be better, which works out great for me because I like to design on a lot of cream backgrounds, <laughs> so the darker mm -hmm. text usually goes well with that. But so hopefully we can get some lighter colors yeah. in there if I have a bolder version. But yeah, darker colors are definitely better suited for it right now. I'm just thinking of your pastel pink. Yes. With that one um, poster you showed of identity, mm -hmm. and you always love pink, even in painting class. <laughs> yeah. And it's just seeing that font become a pink font I'm like waiting <laughs> yes that is probably most definitely coming okay. I can't resist myself when it comes to pink so and let's see where would you like to travel to well, everywhere is that an is that an <laughs> option <laughs> yes everywhere but is there like a spot would you like to go to Europe or be still in the United States um, I've always Europe would be amazing but I've always had wanted to go to Australia mm -hmm. I don't even don't even have an answer as to why but I just sometimes I hear the accent and I'm like I would really want to go there go there yeah and what would you tell to students who are just thinking about would I want to do art or digital design what would you what advice would you give them um I would definitely say that there's no way that you can go wrong because I mean I've I've always wanted to do g digital design but I've kind of bounced back and forth between majors so I mean, either way you can get there, and I think especially with digital design and art are both included in the same department, especially here at VCSU. So even if you're unsure, I'm like, you can explore both paths and see what you want, and nothing will be hurt. You can explore, 
you can explore both and everyone can communicate with each Mm -hmm. other and you can find whatever you want to do. And that's the fun part, I think, at Valley City Mm -hmm. State is basically as a student, you can go almost any path you want to. Mm -hmm. And with the marketing minor, where are you hoping to tie that back in with your digital design? Yeah, I think I started I started with the marketing minor right away because mm-hmm. I knew how much it related to graphic design. And I think that's always kind of, you know, people need designs because they need to market their product. Mm-hmm. So I think just the more that I knew about marketing, the better designer I could be in how helping people promote their product with my designs and how I could visually communicate that marketing message with whatever audience they want me to. Especially with branding, because I know you've always yes. talked about branding of what mm-hmm. style and... What is one brand you would love to redesign? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> that is a tough question. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I don't know if I would like to redesign this, but I really am drawn to um, Dunkin' Donuts as a brand mm-hmm. with, I don't know, the colors, mm-hmm. and I think the typeface is really interesting. So I would love to, you know, kind of work with that somehow or that type of style I think would mm-hmm. be really cool. Yeah. Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah. The coffee. <laughs> Right, right, the coffee, back to the coffee. Back to the coffee. But, yeah, I just really like how they have, like, well, their name is Dunkin' Donuts, mm-hmm. but they're, a lot of their branding is, like, simplified down to the DK and mm-hmm. K or whatever, like, just the few letters. So, for some reason, I'm really drawn to that and how they kind of, you know, scaled that down a little bit in their branding. So yeah. That's, like, with your initials BN and yes. especially BKN sometimes. Right. You put in with your initials yeah I use my middle name a lot because Bailey Nelson is you know there's lots of other Bailey Nelsons Mm -hmm. in the world so I use that's I use my middle name a lot for that reason just to help say this is Bailey K Nelson yes (laughs) to stand out yes exactly and then how do you come up with new design ideas and what is your process like Sometimes it's really hard to come up with ideas. I feel like sometimes in a lot of my classes with projects, I have to like remind my professors. I'm like, don't worry, like I'll get this done, but I just don't have an idea quite yet. And I just because, yeah, sometimes that can be the most time consuming Mm -hmm. process if nothing's coming to mind. But like I said, I kind of always go back to the text first. If I'm struggling, maybe it's like a branding sort of situation. I take the name of that brand and I look at the text and how can these letters maybe connect or how can Mm -hmm. I maybe carry a line through every single one. So that's kind of where I start is the text and then maybe I add color. And yeah, so like I said in my talk, once I figure out the text, everything else can kind of fall into place. Which is kind of important, that text. Yeah. And then going back to your internship, the one that was the Times Record where you were limited do you find it more challenging that way or do you feel when you have more freedom, there's too much freedom? Yeah, I think, I mean, with the Times record and with newspaper, I think I've gotten, I'm not sure if this is the right word, but I think I've gotten very like calculated Mm -hmm. in everything that I do. Like I can, I can maybe put together a whole paper in just like a couple hours just because now it's just, it's just second nature. Mm -hmm. Like, yep, this font, this size, like stretch it, you know to fit across the whole page this many columns so I think I've gotten into such a rhythm there where now I just know you know I know how things are supposed to be so even though I'm not challenged creatively like I said it's more about problem solving and I don't or I think it's such a different ball game I feel like than like actually than the designs that I have done in college which I mean I think is really good because it's just something different and I've also gotten like so much faster at you know working with the InDesign program which is also something that's nice but yeah I think of I don't feel like the limited creativity or the limited typefaces Mm -hmm. has really affected me because I like to just be able to you know it just feels like I'm doing work I'm doing a job because someone else hired me to make this so that's how I have to do it kind of thing so which is of the Adobe programs which one's your favorite Um, I think it would have to be InDesign, which is definitely, I don't even use InDesign the most, but I think I've always been interested in page layout the most. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if I mentioned in my talk, but in my artist bio, I talk about that I was the editor of my yearbook in high school. Mm. So that's kind of how, that's kind of how I started with designing on a digital platform. And so I think that page layout and, um, you know, working with, you know, different layouts, whether it's posters or books or whatever but so that would actually be my favorite which is you know weird because I haven't used it in a while but (laughs) yeah well I use it at work all the time but okay yeah that's other than that 
And nothing with Illustrator or Photoshop there. Yeah, I do like Illustrator. Okay. Illustrator is probably one that I use the most. And I also okay. find that one maybe to be a little bit easier to use maybe than InDesign because sometimes when you get InDesign, the shortcuts are different and yeah. you kind of have to get used to a different thing again because you're not used to the shortcuts being different. But yeah, Illustrator is fun because I feel like you can do like almost anything right. with Illustrator. So yeah. More of that vector-based artwork. Right. Well, yeah with uh, Photoshop as your raster base. Yeah, yeah, pixels and pixels. everything. Yeah. So do you see yourself running your own business doing freelance work or would you rather work for a marketing company? I think, I think the answer would be both just because, well, at first I would like to just kind of work for maybe a company or a marketing firm or something just so I can kind of, you know, gain that professional experience. But I can definitely see myself owning my own business after that once I get that experience, whether it's, you know, exploring maybe with more of like my stationary collection, if I make more of those and sell them. Or maybe I could even I always think of like the Shutterfly sites where, mm -hmm. you you know, there's pre-designed layouts where I could, you know, make those for people. But I don't think I'm ever I don't think I'm ever going to stop kind of running my own freelance mm -hmm. business with, you know, whether it's signs for weddings, signs for graduations, addressing <laughs> dressing invitations but so I don't think I'll ever fully stop doing that but I can see myself growing, growing continue to grow it yeah awesome do you think anyone can become a designer is it a talent or a skill um I think it's definitely it is a skill I would say I think anyone especially with design I think people often relate it to art which makes complete sense mm -hmm. but I definitely think like I said with design thing text you know the typeface can be given to you you can create very straight shapes you can make anything the right size that you want and you can undo it very easily <laughs> yeah. so I think design maybe even though it's considered an art I think it is something a skill that you can naturally build whereas I think art is something where people think that you naturally have to I mean you can practice your craft at art too but yeah. so, you know some people at the end of the day just like weren't made to be an artist <laughs> but I think I do think design is something that is a skill that can be developed and you can definitely learn a lot about it. And it does take practice. Yes, too. definitely. About, I know you didn't say of how many hours, but how many hours did it take you to make your typeface everlasting? So many. <laughs> I have been, I, I actually got asked this question earlier and I was like, I don't even know, like days isn't even like the right term. I'm like weeks, maybe like a year <laughs> almost. It's so, and I think the most time consuming part is actually the steps before that you can actually make it a typeface. Cause that's what I said. It was shocking when I downloaded it and actually typed because I was like, you know, I had written out every single character. I had saved them all, destroyed the storage on my laptop, <laughs> trying to get ev or uh -oh. all the characters in. Yeah. But yeah, it took me a long time. I've been working on it ever since the beginning of last semester. Oh my gosh. So yeah, it's taken me a long time. And then there's so many different adjustments you have to make mm -hmm. too, like I said, with whether the spacing or, you know, if it, sometimes it didn't type straight, some letters kind of slipped through the cracks on some of them. So I had to fix them, but. Almost like when playing volleyball, making sure you have the mm -hmm. rights going for serve or yes. set. <laughs> yes, lots of things that have to, that have to line up. Line up perfectly. And a lot of that's also with the printing of it. To right. Make sure, which. Yeah. It's amazing how much of the back end sweat and tears you yes. go through of like handwriting that we think, oh, it's just writing it on paper, but mm -hmm. there's a lot more work to it of putting it all into. Yes. Yeah, especially with that script typeface because, you know, you want a script typeface or a cursive typeface to connect somehow like it was done with one line when really they all had to be separate in order to be able to be typed. So that was kind of, that one was challenging to get all of it to get all of it lined up and overlapping so they would so they looked like they connected even though they actually don't yeah. and would any advice you would give for any student taking digital design like starting out I think just being open to learn I think sometimes in classes things can you know it can get maybe critical because I think when you're starting out you don't necessarily know a lot about maybe like the technicalities of design and like what mm -hmm. a viewer would maybe know when they look at it so even though you think your design looks really good, sometimes it's just not properly functioning. I think I ran into that problem a lot where I was making things that were really aesthetically pleasing, or at least they were to me, 
but when it comes to the function and the composition, people's eyes wouldn't flow through the design. People wouldn't know what it's about. So I think at the beginning, just like, you know, even though maybe you have an eye for the aesthetics part mm -hmm. of it, to be open to like the technicality and the functions of design, I think it's really important to, even though, you know, maybe your classmates or your professors are being critical of you, I think that it's just so you can learn and become better. Definitely. And would you say it was a challenge, especially going from a two-dimensional surface then to the computer and then doing that app program? Was that a challenge when making that? Yes. I think, or it's definitely two, like, different things because, like, especially as I started out taking all these art classes, kind of, like, patiently waiting for those digital mm -hmm. courses to come in, it was definitely different because I took that web design class where I was building the app. I took that at the same time that was as I was taking all my other first digital yeah. design courses. So I was kind of learning everything at once. And yes, yeah, so we were le learning a lot about user interface. And I think it was kind of a different ball game to think about how people are actually going to have to like navigate through and look at text to see, okay, where is this going to take me? Where is this? Or like, how can I get to the next step? Mm -hmm. Or where can I get to? I was making a tea app. So yeah. I guess, how can I order a tea? How can mm -hmm. I order a shake? And I was just kind of like, it was difficult trying to think about being someone that uses apps and actually creating it because there's so many things that go yeah. into it. And especially since we all have our cell phones, right? Yes. <laughs> With us, it's, which is kind of nice of being mm -hmm. able that you're used to already of like using mm -hmm. different apps. It kind of almost was a cheating way. I shouldn't say it like that, but it's right. Yeah, it's definitely. And I think that like kept bringing about new, th like new obstacles when I was mm -hmm. creating the app because like I would go and I would maybe pay for my Starbucks with the app and I would see, oh my gosh, like I forgot to make this page and this page and this page because if you think about an app and how many buttons you click and how many pages mm -hmm. and how many things you scroll through on your phone, like every single aspect of that has to be designed into a new page and then it has to be linked to each other so you can navigate through it properly. So there's just, there's so many things that you need to take into consideration. And it's crazy, especially for designers, like thinking from step one, which might be a sketch you put in your sketchbook to mm -hmm. like, here's your end product. Yeah. And that was, we had to make, I have like a whole process book of that whole process mm -hmm. of making the app because it started with just like sketches in a sketchbook. And then it was like black and white digital designs. And then it was adding color. And then you had to, it looked really nice, all designed all designed out but then you have to link all the buttons and link all the mm -hmm. pages so that everything can actually be clicked and it can actually take you through each screen so yeah it was it was very eye-opening to see how everything needs to connect wow so what would be like the project you really are thankful for have learned or taken here at VCSU from one of the classes oh wow that is a, <laughs> that is a good question um I think well I mean, the obvious answer would be my research studio project, mm -hmm. which was my typeface. Mm -hmm. But I, I think that project just like I did a lot of it on my own from the very beginning, which I think that's why that's why it's been the most impactful, because, you know, a lot of the times we're given an assignment and, you know, maybe you have to do this or make it this dimensions or you're kind of you're kind of given the outline, you know, of what you're supposed to do, even though you're open to anything creatively you still kind of have that idea or maybe that foundation to work off of. But, you know, with the research studio class, you can do any project that you want. And I knew that, you know, making a typeface was always something that I wanted to know. But I'm like, no one has actually taught me how to do this before because it's it's not something that's mm -hmm. like we don't have a typeface creation class. Yeah. Like we have a drawing class or a graphic design class. So it was something that I really had to research and go from the very beginning to kind of teach myself how to do it. So I think that's another reason why it was so time consuming, but it made the end product very rewarding. Which is awesome. I mean, especially when you see the work that you put into it. Yes. And, and would you take it back to printmaking, the, the regular old fashioned through the printing press ever? I think I would. I saw or I showed in my one of my first printmaking things I ever did. I actually used text, yeah. which is which is very hard because obviously if you're printmaking, you have to put words backwards. Mm -hmm. So I decided to use my, my writing backwards <laughs> talents to kind of do that. But I definitely think, and especially if you do like, you can do stuff digitally for that too, you yeah. know, just like flip it on screen and then print it out and do something like that. But I do think that using it on prints would be really cool. Would you do silk screen, screen printing or through the Lionel cut? 
Um, probably the screen prints. That would also be another thing that I need to work on with mm -hmm. the production aspects of it is, you know, the silk screen or maybe the lino cut, you know, both things are aspects of production that yes. I'm interested in furthering my, my knowledge. Which is important, especially as you're building up your portfolio before. Yes. Next. I mean, that's a nice thing this next semester mm -hmm. that you get to kind of play in a sense. Yes. I mean, you get to play volleyball, which... Right. But then also play in your digital design and also art again. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't think that balancing, you know, doing my doing my show and the artist talk during volleyball, I wasn't I wasn't very interested in tackling that because I wanted to do that in the spring during mm -hmm. our off season. But yeah. I do think that, you know, with the extra time and with this extra semester, I can really take the time to, you know, like maybe learn what I want to learn, mm -hmm. build my portfolio, work on production and work on things that, you know, maybe I didn't get in the last four years, which is something I'm really excited about. Awesome. And I know you're excited with the volleyball, going back to that, is that you get to play with your sister one last time. Yes. That was, I mean, I remember the day that I found out that I got a fifth year. It's kind of hard to know, like, you know, mm -hmm. like two years down the road, am I going to want to play again? Am I going to feel mm -hmm. done? And my sister hadn't even signed to play yet. But I was like, oh, like if she does come here, I'll have another year to play and we'll only have one year apart, which at that point we had been two years apart in our athletics. She's been playing in high school and I'd been playing in college. So I was just I was really excited to see her on the court again. So I knew that knew that with that extra blessing of the COVID year that we would both enjoy that a lot. And I know probably your parents are excited too. With yes. Like, come one time <laughs> to see games. And I know. I was like, I'm good thing we signed to play for the same team yes. or else my parents would be running all over the place. <laughs> Which is makes it easier for your parents and grandparents, right. especially. Yes. So would you have any other advice for people looking at Valley City State University when they're like deciding whether with coming here or what chose? I mean, I know you told us what you chose. Yeah, I think it kind of goes back to what I was saying earlier. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, you might see a small college like Valley City and see that you know, and maybe feel like you're limited because we maybe don't offer as many majors or as many programs as other schools. But something that I always say and like relating it back to art is that we do cover all of, like we do cover everything in some way. And I think even if you don't, maybe you don't know you want to be like, maybe you don't know you want to be a graphic designer specifically, but I was like, maybe you know you are interested in art. You can come here, get a digital design or an art degree, and you can, you know, that's a very vague and open degree that you can do so much with. And so whether that's like math or science, we have all of those like basic grounds. Mm -hmm. And so I think that foundation can set you up for something rather than maybe going something and majoring something that's so specific that kind of ties you down when you aren't, you know, you aren't fully sure, mm -hmm. like just out of high school, what exactly you want to do. So I think, and especially I think the small college is really good at, you know, there's so many people that are so willing to help you figure out what you want to do. And you definitely don't get lost in the crowd here. No, <laughs> there's so many people that care about you. And yeah. there's so many people that are willing to help you. And I just don't think that you can get that kind of community at somewhere else. No, that's the one nice thing here at Valley City yes. State. Because it's like, I remember when you first walked into McCarthy 356 for 2D yep. design. Yep. And now it's full circle. You got to be see, see the building move and everything. Yep. Got to be a part of it all. It's like, it's a special time. Yes, it is. You're probably trying not to cry when it gets to graduation, right? <laughs> yeah. I try not to think about it too much. I try not to think about yeah. it too much, no. And, hmm, looks like with questions, we're about, we have no other ones. And do you have any other last statements you want to make, Bailey, before we wrap up? Um, not really. I just want to, you know, make sure everyone knows how grateful I am if they help me with my show in some way. Or thank you for watching. Thank you if you came to my show or are coming to my show. Just, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Bailey Nelson. Bailey K. Nelson. <laughs> yes. For your exhibition, Everlasting. We will enjoy having you for one more semester in the art department and that you get to give inspiration for our incoming freshmen and all the student athletes we thank you for your leadership also in volleyball and in the art department we greatly appreciate your time and we will miss you <laughs> so i'm gonna hold back my tears till after graduation <laughs> yeah me <laughs> yeah. too <laughs> um so everyone who's tuning in thank you again for tuning in
please. It's 3.50. You got about 10 minutes to wrap up your work day and come over to the Center for the Arts lobby to see Bailey K. Nelson and ask her more hard questions about everlasting. <laughs> Have some food and enjoy, again, this beautiful warmer day in April, April 13th. It's actually 40 degrees out and the snow is melting, folks. We greatly appreciate everyone tuning in to see this exhibition and we hope you come back on April 26 for our second digital design major, Jarrett Gromish, for Drawn In. So see you over at the Senator for the Arts. Thank you.